Good morning from Springfield Baptist Church. Uh, this morning I would like to invite your attention to the 24th chapter of the book of Luke. And while we're getting there, let me say welcome to the services. And um, remember all the special people uh, in your prayers for all the problems that we're having with health situation throughout our country. This morning I want to talk to you just a little while about the resurrection. Uh, since this is Easter Sunday, and uh, uh, that's the day we set aside to worship uh, the resurrection of our Savior. The first 12 verses of Luke chapter 24 deal with the resurrection. The next few verses, Jesus is trying to make the people understand what he had been trying to teach them and what the Bible has tried to teach us uh, forever. Uh, as, we, as we look at this and see the things that, that are here, it begins with, says, it says, Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garment. And as they were afraid, and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran to the sepulcher and stooping down and beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which had come to pass. Now before I read the rest of it and get to uh, what I really want to talk about, just, just think about what we have just read, uh, especially that last verse. Then arose Peter and ran, ran unto the sepulcher, and stooping down he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which had come to pass. All the time they and now this is the man that told the Lord, uh, all the others may deny you, but I'll die before I'll do that. And Jesus told him, Peter, before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. And this is the man that left the sepulchre wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Uh, but then uh, uh, and you, you think about that, and you just think about the rest of these verses that we're going to read and what Jesus said to these people. But as we look at this, most people that I know believe in the resurrection. Um, I will not say that as adamantly as I would have a few years ago. But I still believe that most of the people I know believe in the resurrection. The resurrection is the very center of Christianity. Uh, the Apostle Paul talks about it. All the Gospels talk about it. Job talks about it. I mean, there's, there's, there's numerous places in the Bible that tell us about the resurrection. And, and yet, when it happened, the people that were with him uh, didn't seem to understand what was going on. But uh, the heart of the message is really in the next few verses, and we're going to read them and then uh, talk about what Jesus has to say to these people. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew nigh and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that you have one to another 
as you walk and are sad. Now, now just think, think about that for a minute uh, and, and why Jesus said this. Uh, what manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? Uh, they, they had just witnessed what Jesus had taught them all the time he preached to them for, for three and a half. Now, we know very little about the life of Christ in the first 30 years that he was here. I mean, there's just not much about it. The last three and a half years, there's 85 chapters in the Bible that talks about that. The last week, there are 29 chapters that talk about that. The last 24 hours, there are 13 chapters that talk about that. But here, uh, Jesus is walking along. The, these men had just witnessed the resurrection. Uh, they... Uh, they, they, the word seemed as idle tales to them they, because they had not really listened to what he said. But then Jesus tells us what, what had happened here uh, in, in, this, in this chapter. He says that he opened their eyes or their understanding that they might understand the Scripture. Uh, I mean, after, uh, after he told them all about it, then he, uh, th then he really let them know what he was talking about. But he said, what manner of communications are these that you, that you have uh, as you talk one to another and are sad? And the one, and, and, and the one of them uh, whose name was Cleo was answering him saying, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hath not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should uh, have re redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company early at the sepulcher, and when they found not uh, his body, they came saying that they had also seen visions of angels, which said unto them that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher, and found it even as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them. Now this is Jesus talking to these two men that he's walking with. O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Now let me stop here just a minute. When he said what he was saying was foolish ones, that, that would be better translated, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. That, that's not the same word that's used in Luke chapter 12, that rich farmer that Jesus said, Thou fool, tonight thy soul shall be required of thee. This is a different word and he was calling them foolish because they were foolish. People today are foolish that don't listen to the word that Jesus has left us and try to understand what he's saying. But he said, uh, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and uh, entered into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh... Unto, uh, and they drew nigh unto the village where, whither they went. He made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it's toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Then they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he taught with us by the way and while he opened to us the scripture? They rose up the same hour, returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told uh, what things were done in the way and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. And so as we look at this and think about what happened, as Jesus walked along with these two disciples, uh, instead of them being excited about what he just, their, their hearts were burdened from, from the things that were going on. It shouldn't have been. And Jesus asked them, why? Why are you sad? And they said, well, are you a stranger that you don't know what's going on? And he said, 
what's going on? And they begin to tell him. And, but, but they should have been so excited about the fact that Jesus had overcome death. I mean, they had seen this. He had overcome death. He was alive forevermore. And they should have been excited about it. But they were burdened because they didn't really understand what Jesus had taught them all the time he was here. He had been here. He had taught them. And they didn't really listen. Verses 18 through 24 tells us all that, how he talked to them. And how he told them those things that, that they needed to know. Uh, but the, and and they, their, their answer was, uh, we, we thought. But we thought this was the one that was going to take care of things. We had hopes that, you know, it seemed like he had failed in the mission that he had come here to do. He hadn't failed. He had accomplished everything that he said he would do. And yet they were burdened because, and they said, and besides all that, he said he would arise in three days. And to them it had been three days. And they hadn't seen him. They didn't know where he was. And so they didn't understand what was going on. And their hearts were burdened because of that. Uh, I, I have, uh, I have really, uh, I'm amazed, I guess, is the word I'm looking for, at, at the fact that some of the people that were involved here were this uh, misinformed about what Jesus was doing and what he was trying to tell them. But after he explained to them, and, uh, and, and we need to look at these, these, these couple of verses. Verse 31, And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and, as he, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he taught with us by the way and while he opened unto us the scripture? Now, look at that verse 32. He opened the scripture to them. Verse 45 says, then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scripture. That is my prayer this morning that God might open the understanding of the people who hear this, that they would know what he's done for them, that they would realize that he died on the cross for the sins of the whole world, that he was spent three days and three, he didn't go in on Friday and come out Sunday morning, he spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, he came forth victorious over death, hell, and the grave, he's alive forevermore, and yet these men were walking along upset because they didn't understand it all, but he opened their understanding that, that, that they may know. I pray this morning that God will open the understanding of us that we will understand what he's really doing. And verse 32, did not our hearts burn within us? Just a, uh, just a short walk with the Lord, just a short talk, just a, uh, a, a short visit turned their burdened hearts into burning hearts. I mean, all of a sudden, you, you know, and, and Jesus didn't get really upset. Now, he did say, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all the prophets. But he wasn't upset with them. Jesus uh, was uh, in a teaching mode here, and he wanted them to understand what they needed to know. But uh, they, 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 they just doubted. I mean, uh, and he didn't become angry with them because they doubted. Uh, he just told them what the Bible said and what it meant. He said it began at Moses uh, and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He taught them about what he was really here for, and he opened their understanding here that they might know. I don't know why their understanding hadn't been opened before, and I don't understand why people today don't do what they should. I don't understand why they don't understand the Scripture. And I realize there's much of it that none of us will ever fully understand until we're with the Lord. But there's enough of the things about the resurrection and why he did it that we can understand it. But he didn't, he, he wasn't angry with them. He just told them what they needed. He didn't scold them. He didn't try to hurt their feelings. He didn't, he didn't, didn't do anything at all like that, that he was trying to make them, uh, he didn't try to make them feel bad or anything. He just wanted them to understand. Uh, but you know, the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians, he said uh, that he made some people sorry with a letter. And he said he first he repented, but he wasn't sorry he did it because it made them sorrow to repentance. If I can say something this morning that will make you think about 
what you need to do, I'll gladly make you Saul to repentance. And that's exactly what Jesus was thinking about here. Uh, Jesus made their hearts burn with the Scripture. He didn't do it with some trickery. He didn't have some famous person give his testimony. He didn't do anything like that. There wasn't a big egg hunt where somebody found a special egg and got a big prize. That wasn't what made their hearts burn. There did not our hearts burn within us when he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the Scripture. That's what ought to make our hearts burn today is to read the Scripture and see what Jesus did and why he did it. And, and the reason that their hearts were because they had fellowship with a risen Savior. And John said in the ninth chapter of John, for as yet they knew not the Scripture that Jesus should rise again. They knew it, but they didn't understand it. They had heard it all the time Jesus was here. They had heard it preached about. They just didn't understand it. But, uh, but, but, but then, after they talked with Jesus, verse 31 says, And their eyes were open, and they knew Him. They believed Him. They understood Him. They realized what He had done, and they accepted it. And then they went back to tell the others, and, uh, and then He opened their hearts uh, and their understanding that they might understand what the Scripture had to say. Uh, they realized, they finally realized what Jesus had done. They did, all this time before, they hadn't understood, but now they finally realize uh, that He came, that He lived a sinlessly perfect life, that He died on the cross, that He spent three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, and that He came forth victorious, and He did it all for them, and now He was going on about His business. Uh, he did everything He was supposed to do, and their hearts changed from uh, the time they met him when he said, uh, what manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And they explained to him why they were sad. He explained to them why they shouldn't be sad. And they realized that and they accepted the fact that he was really the risen Christ and their hearts burned because they did that. So on this resurrection day, as we think about what Jesus did, why He did it, and all the things that went on here, let me ask you this morning, what is the condition of your heart? Uh, be honest with yourself. Don't be like, as the Apostle Peter talked about uh, in, in his writings, he said, you believe there's one God, you do well. The devils have believed also and trembled. I don't want you to believe from the head this morning. I want to know if you have a believing heart really from the heart. Not just understand that Jesus came. Not just think about the fact that he was, was a man, uh, maybe a good man, that, you know, maybe, and, and all of the. I want, you to, I, I want you to look into your heart and see if you really have a believing heart. Was, was there ever a time in your life when you understood that you were lost, that you needed the Lord, and you repented of your sins and asked Him to come into your heart? That's what this resurrection is all about. That's why Jesus did what He did. So you would have the opportunity to do just what you need to do. Uh, does it, d d d d this morning, ask yourself and be honest with yourself, do I have a believing heart? Have I really accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior? Does this Resurrection Sunday really mean anything to me? Or is this just like any of the other days that I go to church and go through the motions and do the things we have to do? Uh, is your heart a burning heart like the Apostle Paul? Paul said, For to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Uh, not everybody can say that. And Paul didn't say it like most people quoted. He said, for to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Paul also said, the time of my departure is at hand. I'm ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, actually. We, we all, it says a good fight, but there's an article there. It means I fought the good fight. The, fight, the good fight of faith. I did what I was supposed to. I have finished my course. 
He didn't finish my course. He didn't finish your course. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I kept the faith. Paul did everything, and there's a crown for me. Have you that kind of heart, a burning heart like Paul did, to, where you can honestly say, I have done what I need to do. I really know that I'm where I, where I need to be. Or do you have a burdened heart? Jesus said, let not your heart be burdened. You believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house or many mansions. If not so, I have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Uh, he also said, Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall t uh, eat the good of the land. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Uh, he, has, he said, Come unto me. Come unto me. Uh, I mean, that, that's, uh, he says, uh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There are so many invitations that the Lord makes, makes to us and gives to us throughout, throughout his word. How about you this morning? Uh, what, what condition is your heart in right now? If it's burdened, trust him. If it's a believing heart, make sure that you're doing the right thing, that you've really repented of your sins and asked the Lord to come into your life. Jesus came. He lived a sinlessly perfect life. He died. He was buried. He was resurrected. And He will come again to receive those who come to Him. Won't you come this morning. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the time we set aside to worship you and to think about the resurrection, the fact that you gave yourself on the cross, but that you overcame death, hell, and the grave, and you came back victorious. We thank you for that, and we thank you for loving us and caring for us. We ask you to be with all the uh, special prayer requests. We pray for all the ones that uh, are affected by the coronavirus situation. We ask you to be with them, be with their families. We pray for our families and for the church families that uh, they'll be able to uh, shelter in the right places and stay away from this and you'll just take care of us. We ask you to be with all the ones who need uh, your help. Watch over and care for them. Forgive our sins, we ask in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen.